let's just start with the good. Let's let's start with the good. Yeah, I think we should do that. All right. Uh, Nikola Jokic is re-solidifying himself as the greatest basketball player in the world. And uh, because of how uh, the NBA Finals shook out and the Celtics ended up um, winning it all, yep. but it was, it was Jalen Brown who was MVP and not Tatum, and Tatum's never really been in discussion for the best player in the world. Those are conversations with, like, Giannis, Luka, Jokic. And because of how it fell, it feels like even though the crown got taken from the Nuggets, that title for world's best player did not get taken from no. Jokic. No, it, you know, yes, the crown was taken from the Denver Nuggets, but Jokic, as an individual player, dominated this year. All right, dominated this year. You can ne- never take anything from a player when they're out there pour- pouring their heart and soul into the game they love and producing at a high level. Man, he, you know, Jokic is doing it. He he is, and 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 you're watching him perform on the world stage in the Olympics, um, and he is masterful beautiful uh, it's like so what we see today is, and it's first thing in the morning it's serbia and australia and the game looked over the game looked over in the first half serbia was down 24 points and what nicola proceeded to end up doing was get his hand on every pass he was poking the ball away Defense. from guards i think he had three blocks he blocked josh giddy like just swatted him uh like he was you know victor Wembanyama. And then he's scoring at an incredible pace. Uh, I, I don't have his stats right in front of me. I thought it was 34. Oh, he, uh, I do have him in front of me, actually. Um, so I want to get this right. Uh, 21 points, 14 rebounds, 8 assists, and 4 steals for Jokic today. It just, just 4 steals. Remarkable. As a center. As a center. Okay. With, eight, with 8 assists. And the people around him aren't all that good. All right. But he's finding a way to get everybody involved. And you know what that is? That's want to. Okay, that's pride. All right, that's understanding what you're doing this for. Why are you out here? Okay, for 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 Jokic, he doesn't have to be out there. No. All right, but he's out there. And so for him, it's like if I'm going to be out here, all right, and I'm looking to the left and right of me, and these these men with me, this is this is their Super Bowl, this is their championship. Correct. I'm gonna give everything I got, all right, to help these to help these men. Get some kind of award, right? Silver, bronze, it doesn't matter. Just get something. Doesn't matter when you're Serbia. No. I watched them play for the silver, and you if you covered it up, you would have thought everyone's life was on the line because they were playing for gold. And 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 pretty much in, the, in a tournament like this, with when Team USA brings its dudes, most everyone's playing for a second anyway. Yeah. Um, we'll see how it shakes out. But Jokic is, um, he is, uh, he's, you know, he's being called the basketball god and all the things that we, we'd say locally here. It's being said on a day like today nationally as and it's a, it's a great point and you're shining light on it that like he's not playing with NBA players there's no. two other NBA players one of them might be a tick above average one of them might be a tick below average whatever um, but he's elevating entire operation like he's done for us <laughs> like he's done for a lot of his teammates yes elevate yes and that's a great story and then we get to the story that's not so great so we turn the page chapter two yeah to, to a guy that may benefit the most from Nicola's elevation. Mm. And that's Jamal Murray, who we are watching on the world stage look like he has two left feet, and it's becoming a legitimate story here in America, uh, our Denver Nuggets guard for Team Canada. Yeah, and, and when I'm thinking about Jamal Murray, Zach, I'm, I'm thinking the opposite, right? We, we talked about how Jokic is playing for pride, playing for his country, playing for the, the players the left and right of him, and he understands how important it is for those players. Well, it seems like Jamal's on the opposite side where it's like, I don't care, right? I'm out there just to be out there. I'm not taking shots. Like there, There's a couple times where Jamal is passing up open shots. Jamal's passing up shots that he would take if he's with Jokic, right? And, and, and it's it's just frustrating to see, all right, his body language, him not him not kind of being productive like we know he can be, for his country, right? You're doing it for your country. And so, yeah, man, it, it's just, it's underwhelming. And quite frankly, like, it kind of makes you mad. Well, it's almost impossible to watch um, in a vacuum. It's not, it's not, we're, we're not breaking down Team Canada just no. to break down Team Canada. But when you're seeing struggles this mighty on the heels of big boy struggles when the Nuggets season was on the line, 
And l- l- let's just say it the way that it is. It's not the first time we've, we've done this. But if Jamal Murray was his 2023 version I- I- in 2024, the Denver Nuggets are playing in the NBA Finals. Yep. Maybe they lose to Boston. I don't know. I would have picked them to win. They beat Boston in Boston. They beat them in Denver. At least they're there, though. At least they're there. But Jamal was such a departure from who he was the previous year. That's why we're emphasizing because now it's looking even worse. Where we thought, you know, and 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 with good reason, saying, hey, this could be the best thing for Jamal, going yeah. to play for Team Canada. Yes. Stay in shape through the summer. He's a historically slow starter. Just cut that gap and bridge the NBA season to the next one by competing at a very, very high level, staying in shape, and not having to, not having to play yourself into shape, would it, which has held Jamal Murray back for, it, for a couple of years. This from- is a great opportunity, Zach. It, it, it really is for a player to say, hey, I'm not, not, I'm not just out there trying to work out, forcing myself. Like, you're literally out there playing basketball with – other players that are as good as you. Ten NBA okay? players on that roster. As good as you. You can be getting better. You can be picking their brain. You should always be learning. Okay, always competing because you want to be the best. Okay, you don't want to be coming off the bench. And at the beginning when Jamal made the statement of, hey, I just got here, um, and that's kind of the reason why I'm not starting. No, 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 no. The reason why you are not starting, okay, is because you are not performing at a high level. Yeah. All right? And the Can- Canadians, Team Canada, they want to win. Yep. And it seems like you don't care to win. And now it's like, hey, this was your opportunity, Jamal, to get better, to get yourself in shape, to get yourself mentally ready for another long year because we're going to need you. And on top of that, you're getting ready to sign a $209 million contract. Right. Okay, a $209 million contract to go out there and perform at a high level so we can go to another championship. Yeah. Whew. Um. And that idea that he was not starting because he was away from the mm. team uh, for, for just a little bit. Yeah, which, what's, your, what's your take on that? Um, it, it, you're 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 trying to compete for a gold medal. That like that that stuff for feelings that wouldn't you don't you don't have an operation that you've built for years and risk a gold medal to say, well, Jamal, you weren't here in training camp with us the entire time. And if that was the case, that would impact maybe his starting role. Maybe 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 yeah. it wouldn't impact who finishes the game. So that's the other side of the coin. Jamal's not starting and he doesn't finish. And it's alarming. And now uh, the secret is out. We've, we, t- we have talked about it here, you and I, reacting to every game for Team Canada and just how lackluster it's been. Well, it's getting worse, and now everyone's talking about it. Uh, Jamal is averaging six points a game on 29% from the field. Mm. He is missing better than seven out of every 10 shots he makes. He is shooting 14% from three, and he's just in general through the eye test a really rough watch. Uh, he doesn't. He's not getting by uh, non NBA guards, and he can't create his own shot. It's just it's really ugly to watch. And when I say that the secret's out, you know, you got Kevin O'Connor from the Ringer tweeting how rough it is. You got Stat Muse, the very popular stats uh, um, uh, handle and website, social media, isolating Jamal Murray's Olympic performance. And I'm listening to the uh, the Hoop Collective uh, podcast. Uh, with Brian Windhorse and Tim Bomtemps. And, man, they got to talking about Jamal at about 30 minutes into the podcast. Yep. And a comment is made, thank goodness we're finally getting to talk about this because I've been chomping at the bit to talk about it. So he had it start. <laughs> yes. He had to start in the segment like, this is going to be a good one. Yes. And and once they started talking about it. There's a, mm. a big-name guy on Canada who's not playing well, Bontemps. I mean, man, take the floor on this one. We've been chomping at the oh. bit to talk about this. Read Jamal Murray's numbers. Jamal Murray. And I'm going to tell you this number first because this number says a lot. He's averaging 19 minutes a game. Yes. He's playing the same amount of time that Andrew Nemhart's playing, okay? There's a reason for that. He is averaging 5.7 points. He's shooting 33% from the field. Oof. 10% from three-point range. Oof. He hasn't taken that many. He's taken, I think he's one of 10. That's what I think he is, actually. Yeah, I would guess one. if he's taken 10, he's probably made one at 10%. Yeah. He has averaging five assists, 19 minutes. Andrew Nemhart and he are basically splitting time. All right, uh, and I'm just going to play one more cut, then we'll react here. Well, and, and he doesn't look good. He looks... To me, he looks a little heavy. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but he, he he doesn't look explosive at all. And, you know, you can small sample size this all you want. The, the, the fact he's playing 19 minutes a game, that in and of itself is kind of strange and alarming. Uh, also, coming off of the postseason that he had, he did not, 
I mean, he hit a couple of game winners that were memorable moments against the Lakers. Overall, he had a pretty bad playoffs. I mean, shot 40% from the floor, 31.5% from three-point range, you know, effective field goal percentage under 45. So you know who they sound like? They sound like me and you. Mm. And 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 these conversations about Jamal's really, really bad postseason outside of singular moments, and there was two of them, and they were awesome. And you could even throw they them were in, awesome. had that half court shots. So you may say three moments, whatever, dunked on LeBron, that was cool. But in general sprinkled in moments. Yeah, yeah, they, that's what they were. They were sprinkled in moments um that were masking hyper inefficiency. Yeah, and, and the thing is we, we can all sit here and turn a blind blind's eye and say, you know, well, Jamal Murray is ours and he'll be okay. But at some point you start to see the writing on the wall and Jamal's not getting any better. And we said it earlier, like you're either getting better or you're getting worse. Nothing ever stays the same. And as an athlete, you're always trying to find ways, okay, to get better. You're always trying to find ways to improve your game because somebody's right behind you trying to take your spot. And so for Jamal's case, I'm not saying someone's going to take his spot, but what I'm saying is what are you doing, okay, to get yourself ready for this year? What are you doing to help Jokic out? Because last year you left Jokic out to dry, okay? And when you go and you turn the TV on and you see Jokic out there fighting for his country, right, fighting with, with his teammates on that Serbian team, all right, that half of them – this is this is a, like I said before a Super Bowl. It's a it's an NBA championship. Yeah, this this, this is that this is for it. for for ten of the thirteen right. guys. And you see how that man goes about his business. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? Yeah, right. What are you doing to to bring something to your country, but also bring to Jokic to help him out? Or we're going to be in another situation next year where we're saying the same thing. Where is Jamal Murray? All right, where is he at? This is supposed to be the the best one two punch in the game, and now it's starting to just look like the best one punch in. Jokic. Yeah, and, and and I think that's a fair um, <clears throat> fair statement that, you know, we, we so often refer to that one-two punch that you're just kind of mentioning, that the, the best two-man game, the best two-man game, yeah. and that is true. That is true. That, that you look at the numbers and over the last four or five years when Jamal's been healthy, it's been the best two-man sequence action that we have in the NBA. But it's fair to ask the question, just how much of that is is a, a Jokic and does Jamal just um, – is he in Jokic's wake that you could – I mean, what is it? what would it look like with SGA and Jokic running pick and rolls? What would it look like with Luka and Jokic pick and rolls? What would it look like with Tyrese Halliburton? And yeah. I, I'm just asking the question. It, but because it's such a known, they have the label, and, and they should have the label of best two-man game. But it, it's, it's uh, what we're watching is disturbing, and what's, what's troublesome to me – is even, and I've said this for years, but in the last year doing this, I've said these NBA players are typically reaching their full potential historically. Yeah. There's exceptions for everything, but we talked about this with Ant-Man and everything. They're, that's about 27 years old. Well, Jamal Murray's 27 right now. And we're seeing... Well, he should be at the peak of his game. Yes. And we're seeing a guy who still looks out of shape, who looks slow, who's coming off a terrible postseason, and... And body language, too. Like, everything matters, Zach. Everything matters from what you do on the court to what you do off the court. And, and and it's like little things like Jamal Murray throwing a hot pack, having a temper tantrum during a game, a playoff game. Right. Where it's like, dude, you guys still have two other games. Like, turn it around. That's a mental thing now. Like, it's like, okay, we got our butts. What, what do we need to do differently so we don't have this happen to us again? Like, that's the maturity. And at some point, it's like, when is Jamal going to grow up and be a little bit more mature on what he's doing? Because... And I, I do this all the time, man. There's times where I sit down in my seat and I'm like, what could I have done better, right, when I'm playing in the, when, when I was playing in the NFL? What could I, could I have, could I have came in a little bit more in shape? Could I have lost a little bit more weight? Could I have stayed the same as I did in college instead of trying to uh, listen to somebody there and gain more? Like, there's always something that you're going to look back back of, and I'm sure you do the same thing, where it's like, what could I have done when I had the opportunity to do it? Yeah. And Jamal Murray, if he's not careful, one of these days, he's going to be looking back saying, what, what, what could I have done for me to stay there longer or have multiple championships or to help Jokic out? Because at some point, you are going to get mature, and you are going to look back at things and say, I wish I would have done things a little bit differently, yeah. and I would have had more success, or I would have been more fulfilled uh, with my journey. Really interesting question that you're asking and I think that's that was all very well said um a part of the layer and you touched on it in passing but a part of the layer here 
that leads to conversations that have almost like a, a a different tone to them. In addition to just talking about basketball, which is the lead, A, B, and C, but you do lose some of the benefit of the doubt and goodwill when you act like a jerk. Mm. And when you when you treat the media like crap, and I'm talking about belittling them, having eaten eating food when you're doing your presser, watching an MMA fight when you're doing your presser, and then in the games you lose control and you're throwing stuff onto the court, and then you're then you're turning it back on the media two days later, and 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 you just do all this stuff, and um, and there's been some other stuff too in the past. I don't want to get sure. too too bogged down with and what he did on Instagram and everything like that. But so there's maturity issues, no doubt, with Jamal. But he's not young. This guy's been in the league for the better part of a decade and just recently has showed this side of himself that can be very unlikable. Yeah. And it's not, to me, a coincidence that Jamal had shown all these characteristics the year after he won the championship because I've told you and I've told our listeners you have. through the last couple of years mm. that when Jamal has success on the court, you see the behavior actually go down off the court and his liberty and license to almost mistreat or talk down or or, or carry himself with a le- level of arrogance. And then when it, it things aren't going great for him is when you see the utmost humility. And I don't like that characteristic, quite frankly. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't. It's, it's interesting. It and is. It, it's it's kind of backwards. Yes. Right? It, it's like I have this opportunity because I'm doing well. Let me belittle somebody. And when I'm not doing good, I'm going to try to kiss everybody's butt because I don't want nobody talking about me. All right? And it's just one of these was like, if you just stay even kill, right, keep things in your head, all right, if you're going to feel a certain way, you're going to always be loved. I mean, you want a championship here. All right, you've done a lot for the Denver Nuggets. No question. But this is my thing to you, right? And this is for anybody out there where it's like, why does he need to change, Zach? Why does he need to change? I mean, he, Jamal Murray, when he may be getting a $209 million contract no matter what. Right. Why do I need to change? Because I don't have to because guess what? They're still going to pay me. I'm still going to be here. I'm still going to be the second best option you guys have. Like, I think at times players start to, to, to kind of, Say, hey, I'm the show. I get to tell you guys what to do because the ball's in my court now. Yeah. And I don't have to change if I don't want to because you guys are going to pay me a lot of this money and I'm not going anywhere. Like, it's, it's just interesting how some people think. Yeah, and, and it is. And I know we're doing a little bit psychiatrist stuff here, but it's all like we have like examples to draw from. We're not, right? So, so, so I brought that, the maturity stuff up because, um, Jamal is one of the great players in Nuggets history. And they did win a championship with him as the second best player. And it's so wild to me that just a year and change after that, this could be the tone of some of these conversations. And I think that sometimes, and I'm I'm catching myself, that you make sure that the tone doesn't go too far with negativity because he's been such a great player. But you lose some of that when you act like a jerk. And the willingness to kind of be more raw with Jamal um, I think a part of the reason why me personally I get there because uh, you lose some of the benefit of the doubt when you kind of act like a jerk. You do. You do. What's the first thing when you're talking to a player and you're, you're asking about another player, what usually happens? And I say it a lot, good dude, right? First thing someone says if they're a, a really, really good player, right? but the first thing they say is he's a really, really good dude yep. or she's a really, really good good girl where it's like you're not just talking about the the sport in them and, and the athletic ability, but you're saying as a person, yep. as a person, they are really good people, yep. and you want to be around them and surround yourself with them because they're good people, yep. you know? And so I'm not saying Jamal Murray's a bad guy, all right? I don't know Jamal Murray, but what I'm saying is when I see his actions, okay, throwing stuff out there on the court that could hurt somebody, what he does to the media, all right, what he has done in the past, all right, that's not screaming, oh, you're a great guy, all right? It's screaming, hey, you're immature. Yeah. That's what it screams. Yeah, he has, he, he, he's got some immaturity stuff. And then now when it's mixed with bad play and it costs the Nuggets and Jokic potentially a trip to the NBA Finals, which I think is super reasonable to to say that's what happened or was a it was a heavy contributor in happening, right? We know MPJ didn't play great. KCP, it's not yeah. all about Jamal. No. But the fact that we went into this Team Canada experience like super positive, like maybe this could be the best thing happening, and it's literally now a legit NBA storyline with how bad he's been. It's, like it's on a decline. That's what it looks like. It does. 
when he's supposed to be in the peak of his physical powers at 27 years old. And and it, and it just so happens it intersects when he's extension eligible. And now you have this $200 million contract hanging in the balance. All right? And and here's more of the conversation that was happening on the Hoop, Hoop Collective podcast. They, uh, they, were talking, they had the whole basketball world to talk about. They spent more time on Jamal Murray than any singular player, and this was part of the conversation. And look, like Jamal – earned his max, obviously, with the way he played and helping them win a title. But yep. in the aggregate, I think you can make a decent argument. Jamal Murray's a borderline or under max player who's been on a max deal on this last deal. And now you're going into this situation where if you're the Nuggets, like I assume they're going to extend him at the max or close to it. If obviously with what he's done there, I, I'm not saying they shouldn't sign him, but if he is less than the player he even was last year, who was – Again, as I've talked about before, he continues to be a confounding player because he has these moments in the playoffs where he looks like one of the 10 best players on the planet, but he's never come close to making an all-star team, never come close to making an all-NBA team, not probably a top 10 point guard in the league. Like, if he's your guy going into his 30s that you're going to build with around Nikola Jokic, is that going to be good enough in the West to go up against all these other teams that are rising in the West? I'll tell you what, man. It's it's fascinating commentary. It sounds like he's he's he sounds like us. That was Tim Bomtemps from ESPN. Yeah. He sounds like us. Where like when you're asked to describe who Jamal Murray is. So say you had a basketball fan that lives in you know Brazil but doesn't watch the NBA, but he knows basketball, and he says, "Who who's Jamal Murray? Describe him to me." It's not a simple answer. He 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 calls him a uh, Tim Bomtemps calls Jamal Murray a confounding player. He's He's confusing because you get the, this version of this guy sometimes, and then it's this other version this other time, and how you reconcile it all from a Nuggets franchise perspective is, um, is fascinating in, in ways that aren't always positive.